we will not forget our duty, which is to raise incense for Africa. We have seen a sign of decline in many nations, but there's a cause for concern in Africa as we see uh, a rise of infections. Our focal point would be to entreat the Lord that he might show mercy onto the continent and send us salvation. It is nothing to the Lord for the plague to suddenly cease. And we have an assurance by reason of his word that has come by inspiration that in the month of May there will be a ray of hope. Let that ray of hope be found in Africa. Can you raise your voice as we begin to petition the Lord about Africa and about the need for His mercy to be made manifest as He sends salvation our way as a continent. There, there seems to be an increase of infections. There seems to be doom playing out. But any crucible that mercy, the mercy of God is introduced into is a crucible that has hope, a crucible that has possibility. And so we ask for the release of the mercy of the Lord on the continent of Africa, using Nigeria as a point of contact, that an end to this plague, an end to this plague, an end to this plague, an end to it in the name of Jesus. Can we raise our voices as we talk to the Lord? Concerning Africa, have mercy. Concerning Africa, have mercy. Concerning Africa, as I talk of the capacity to me, Nazali, imbromo komporoske siko breskova la manturia, mebro kopatasko pre kovaza mantali, mai kompera na siko breskova si la manturia. Barato skaparama santa baboria skebris kofatama skelite. Mendo kombre seke tamina uria arabo ski kombre. Ambalato sebre gedei maiko skamina ambre koko skido brokotolia. Ambria namamonze eleko skito bre mando roko poroto skito brande kubria. Mezgo vala moto manako skabre. Mai companze zele, abresco fe la musge valata combe, braisco falamanda zali, labro copondo scebre gedela sguva lama, mando scabase zico brevo honto robo scabre gadali, ma coparisco bresco va santa baboria, mezo zela iso zela branta babala te atola brasqueto mandei. I am the God that healeth thee. He wants to be known as the healer. He wants to be identified as the healer. And just in case you see a healing manifest, it's a sign that he's present. That's how he wants to be known. And so we call him the healer over Africa. We call him the protector over Africa. Protect us against this menace. Protect us against this infirmity. Let there be a sudden, a sudden intervention that will affect all the figures on the continent. And let it be, let it defy science, defy human understanding. So that all eyes will look to you and your glory. Save us, O God. Mahanso teke malaboria baba. Brescove seke manto salambo kosketamila. Brecampon de schizo somo coria, ma brasqueto caperande schizo zela, mintos que paturia babalatos, brasqueton de lembrequete nezozi, la sonizo zaita combre que tacus camanda, ilamon sataya, ilamon zecle prosque, la brosica bezozani, La ramas ken so praska tala bong jami. Me la brosketo si cobre. La bakunda skambe zozolia. 
Bracante scopeta minacadia malabahala. Esso se la brisco fa la mozali. Brisco teli monde e brecesco salabonda. Le broschizo se la bracanta baboria. Licos cabezami laiton jama cabras canta baboria. E l'opre che te la cuse macatalia. E l'opre che te la scandon sheke manzi. E brocunta iscopetamina curia. For with you there is mercy. With you there is plenty of redemption. Come show us mercy. Extend thy hand to redeem us. Send unto us salvation as a continent. Defeat, defeat this beast. Defeat this enemy. Put an end to the potency of this enemy ravaging the land, ravaging the nations. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, have mercy on Africa. Brescove le mene subriata babon jama. Branda kapara masiko brescon felama. Oh, kabo samama itaka prescuva lamo. Alina selino compreskiva seba antelia. Bero conske tem brezuva nali. La brantos ke pocompe le nezi zela. Briscava tama so brescava zulia mamaranto. Membros que te cabuza male, presco fata mazali. Marando schizo sele, marando samas gebrus que fatabe na culia. Presco vena, if the prayers rise from your heart, God indeed will show the continent mercy. For it is only by mercy that we will escape this one this time. There is a need to, or for Africa to present her salvation. If not, we will drown. Under the weight of this cause. I know in the spirit it has been defeated. But we need to contend to ensure that it does not encumber the ground. It doesn't cover the ground. And that's why we are here with incense. Raising incense for the nations. Raising incense for the territories. That the hand of God might be made manifest. That the grace of God might go forth. We stop you, coronavirus. I compese nello broco scritto mi bravo sa capande sguvesame ma hambelia che bon seketala apre boco pongo soco mesgovilato brisco fandesi camama bracatalia che bon seketamina compre bacusca tebo samanzali we say corona fall on your knees bow to his majesty in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise. Corona, fall on your knees. Can you join me in giving a commandment to this? Menace, fall on your knees. Bow. <laughs> Retreat, we banish you from Africa. Can you raise a command? It, it can hear you. It can hear you. Fall. On your knees before Jehovah. Fall on your knees before He that is the salvation of Africa. Fall on your knees. Fall on your knees in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Fall on your knees. Fall on your knees. Coronavirus. Fall on your knees. O Felemo Copri. Mesco Breketamonde. Bresico Temoncelia. Baratos kete menzozolia branta babora. Fall on your knees. Bow down. Mai compera uske me seseli. Mi bro compera masketa mena branta baboria. Ala na supre ke pasco pe kamande shika bahando. Brigo sombe la matosi. This is not the end, it's a bend. Because God is about to be glorified. On the continent of Africa. And so we ask that you stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Let the mystery of salvation go to work on the continent. And we ask, oh God, 
uh, that you that you step into the terrain, step in, step into Kanu, step in to Dusi. Let your entrance into the land be visible as everything that brings death, as everything that is death itself uh, begins to bow to the glory of your majesty. Mi kombe si kabande sobre ke talimonda brekufa si kobres kafata mamala e boboria kapera mina zubria kapes kompela ma 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 You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for a human. You are God all by yourself. Can you sing one time? You are God. You are God from the beginning to the end. There's no There's place. No place for argument. You are God. You are God of our You are God. You are God. You are God, you are God. You are God from the beginning to the end. There's no place. You are God of fire. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. Nothing can compare. There's no place for with your majesty. Because you are God. All by yourself. You are God. You are God. From the king to the end, there's no place for argument. No place for argument. You are God of yourself. You are God. You are God. You are God. From the king to the end, there's no place for argument. No place. God place. One more time, you are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God of yourself. Luke chapter 1. For as much as Many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed amongst us. Many have taken it in hand. If there's anything that should reign on the news, it's Jesus. At this time that Luke gives an account of, uh, to speak about Jesus as popular, that's what should be on the news. That's what should be on BBC, on, on CNN, about Jesus. Hallelujah. But now, Corona is what makes the headlines. There's something fighting for the position of Jesus on the airwaves. And the name of that thing is, is Corona. It is sacrilege for, for anything other than Jesus to be made so prominent. And, oh my God. That's why we sang that song, You Are God. We have not misplaced your identity. Corona has not become the next, the, the, the current object of our meditation. You, you are so large that we can't even see Corona. We can't see Corona. And what we are saying is, Lord, in thy jealousy, there's something contending for the supremacy, which is yours and yours alone. And in thy jealousy, thunder, thunder with vengeance against Corona in Africa. That's the prayer point. Can you, can you, can you ask him to, to look upon Africa and thunder in his jealousy? Is it not written that you are a jealous God? Is, is it not written? Is it not written? We see something fighting for the same space that is yours. We see something fighting for that which is your due. Oh, we ask, O oh God, in thy vengeance, in thy sovereignty, in thy power, thunder against coronavirus. Precosico pera mande scuve la battaglia. Bracanso se la mezzo se le che brecheta musa la barata. 
Ambra kasome na zukle breskove sabalanto Bresko filamanto sama kabre Babaila kabreskove lama supre Kabasko sesela Imbro kopokonze la minos gabri Rabon saka paka manzeli bokoria Lebroske vazi zozo Vazi zozele kampreskuva la muzali Epreke skabaruske Labon seke mazanda baboria Mazamba bori mase preskava suma latalia e presko pe la mura batata molia kemo se kemo sonde kemo matakunda kemo seli mala aita presko potomo se katale preka suma sani bo kombre babalesko bo somo babalesika praske bo sama aliata ta menekete kompele Proskambeli asiko preskovalada Empereko poskata Ikompas keponde Ensotele ke praskata baboria Ala moseke Ala mamo mosanda Ala mamo moselima Ala mamo mosantoria Mablaskata babonze ne ele kompa Lika bambo santo dobo konte La mamo siko preskove la batatala Anta la babosa, ala bosa mena, ala bomoria kapa santa babola, presko vela mena skadia, le prasketo sama santa, that the Lord will arise, will arise, and in his vengeance, in his jealousy, he will do damage to this infection, this, this virus. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. And one more time, we commit the nations of Africa, the most vulnerable nations of the world, into your hands. And we ask, oh God, that you might look upon this continent with mercy. You are the only hope that Africa has ever had. We came face to face with Ebola. And the reason why we are still here is because Ebola failed. We came close to face to face with many, many infirmities, many plagues, outbreaks, cholera, all kinds of stuff. We are still here because there is salvation beyond Ebola, beyond cholera. Beyond Corona, there is salvation. And so we ask, Lord, that in thy mercy, stretch forth your hand. And let Africa know your salvation experientially. In the name of Jesus. In the African experiment, let, let the predictions of the wise come to nothing. Let the predictions become foolishness. On the account of the manifestation of your deliverance on the continent. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. We were talking about um, the gift of discernment of spirit. The gift of discernment of spirit. It's a critical gift and we cannot overemphasize its usefulness in the body of Christ at this strategic season where God has decided to unleash an avalanche, to unleash an avalanche of his spirit on our generation. We must be adequately educated to be able to confront uh, the season in which we find ourselves. I'd like to still emphasize a little more on uh, the discernment of spirit. What the um, the engineering of discernment. John chapter 8 verse 44. This is Jesus speaking, okay? This is Jesus speaking. There is an engineering. There is an engineering to this issue of discernment. And um, in... Uh, John chapter 8 verse 44 this is Jesus addressing the Pharisees 
addressing the um he said ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it because of the lying nature of the devil when it's as if the devil is speaking the truth he has actually devised a new technology on how to tell lies in such a way that it looks like the truth. The devil is not capable of truth. The devil doesn't have the ability to speak the truth. If he comes to bring witness in court, everything is going to put together. It's going to be a deceptive display of a lie. There is a word used in the Greek here that I would like to draw attention to. He say, ye are off. The, that word off is my emphasis. Because in the Greek, that's the word for ek. And it is the same word that is in ek liasa. Ek liasa. Ek liasa. Now, you see, what discernment does is that it probes an issue. It probes a person beyond his face value. It probes him to his nature. So it's a nature test. It's the nature of things that are pressure that discernment touches and bears witness of. So Jesus said, Ye are ek, ye are off, ye are ek, you derive from, you originate from. That's your origin. And because that's your origin, we know the substance of the devil. And we are not expecting that you will be any different from him because your origin has already sold you out. So discernment probes beyond face value. It probes into the heart of the origin of a thing. That's the first scripture I wanted to bring to our notice. Because if you made decisions that you made, critical decisions on the strength of the things that people told you, you have been deceived. Your, your depth is not suited enough um, for you to navigate with truth. If it's the testimony of men that forms the major module or molecule through from whence you uh, make strategic decisions. It has to go beyond the hearing of your ears. It has to go beyond the sight of your eyes. Uh, uh, and when you hear people speak, uh, you, you need to trust God to be able to go beyond what you are hearing to touch the origin of the substance that is communicated. You might find out that the source point is from a deceiving spirit. So, discernment is, <laughs> is a gift. is a gift for the strong. I remember those days my brother used to be in the secondary school. I was in junior secondary school. He was in SS3. I was in GS3. So they had um, FCS inter-school school meeting. So all the ESCOs were gathered in one of our churches, the Orthodox churches in town here. Most of is there still Ekan in this town? Ekan Church. Okay, that was where it was. All right. So uh, all the ESCO members from different schools were present, and I remember there was one brother then in Mount Saint Gabriel, and uh, he was a man of prayer. In fact, we knew him as a man of prayer from secondary school days. Uh, in his room, he has a big cupboard, and if he wants to pray, he will move the cupboard and block the door. It takes a lot of energy for you to dissociate that cupboard from the door. So that is already serious discouragement against going out of the door. So And as long as he has not prayed for two hours, he won't come out. So he had that culture of prayer right from his secondary school days. So this meeting was put in place, and he happened to be the president of presidents in Benue State. He was the, um, that was his capacity. So it was supposed to be a prayer meeting. 
And when he, he came into the meeting, he kept looking around like this. <laughs> then after a while, he spoke in tongues, wild, spoke wild, spoke wild. And one of the ESCO members began to manifest. His spirit, yes, in secondary school, his spirit sensed the texture of something which was not Christ. And he was able to pick the frequency. And when he rejected the thing, there was a reaction. It, nobody spoke to him. He just came. He just came to the meeting and he was able to... That it, 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 he was able to probe to the egg level. You are egg, your father. He was able to probe to the origin of what was there. And he addressed the thing from the origin. Because at face value, you will say all of these people are executives. They are women and men of God. But discernment has another story that is different from what people think. And if we can probe into things to their source, we will have less challenges in life. I, Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Second scripture. Psalms. 55, verse number 21. Psalm 55, verse number 21. Don't forget. Verse 21 of Psalm 55, the Bible says, The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. You see, there, there are two different things. The expression, that which is visible to the eyes of men, was as smooth as butter. That's how young damsels get, get swayed, you know. The butter man just comes up. Glory. Well articulated deliveries in terms of utterance. And uh, yeah, the butter man. <laughs> meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, the heart is at war. And when you have disarmed, disarmed the damsel with, with words, it would take the special grace. You know, there's the grace of God. We have something called the grace of God. We have the type that is special. The special grace of God for you to travel beyond those words that are coated with butter to see the war that is in his heart. He said, he said what? He said the words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. And his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. His words were softer than oil. Hallelujah. They were drawn swords. The one that has discernment can see beyond the oil tongue, the butter tongue. He can see the war and he can see as much as the swords. And he feels the discomfort of the piercing of the swords already in his heart through the Holy Ghost. So, no matter how you subscribe to this oil-suited utterance, the man of discernment is already weeping. While there is nothing that suggests that there is war, he is weeping the tears of war because he sees beyond what is presented for men to see. And he can pick the frequency of the testimony of the Holy Ghost. May the Lord open your eyes. When, when, when wicked people disguise as, 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 as wolves in sheep clothing, may the Lord quicken your spirit to be able to try the heart and not the words. May the Lord make you wise beyond the hearing of your ears and make you a man of understanding beyond the sight of your eyes. May the Lord give us the grace to be able to see the heart and to also perceive the war that has been kindled therein. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You have heard my story? I was accosted by... No, you will not believe. So let's let's leave that. Let's leave that. Let's leave that. 
May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So don't forget those two scriptures. Jesus came and said, you are of your, your father, the devil. You know, that will look offensive. But Jesus was seen beyond how they were dressed. These were reverend gentle people dressed in, in ecclesiastical apparel. But what Jesus was seeing was ek, their source. Ek, their origin. Ek, their foundation. Jesus saw it in a twinkling of an eye. A different testimony informed his perspective about them. Alright? So that's what it's about. And we, we have said that um, the gift of discernment of spirit will help us, will give security against false doctrine and false teaching and false ministers. How many of you have been somewhere before and someone raised some things in the scripture? You didn't quite agree. Has there ever been a reaction before? You went somewhere and you, there was a reaction. There was a reaction inside. It's not because the atmosphere wasn't good. Everything was good in the atmosphere. The colors were adequately blended. The lights were wonderful. But there was something wrong. Something was not just right. If you can pick that frequency all right, and disconnect early enough, you'll be delivered from the eventuality that is about to break forth. God is doing that as an act of mercy in most cases. Like I shook a lady and I felt I was still single then. It was 10 years after that time that the lady now confessed her real mission. I met her. She had repented. God had helped her. And then she now said, that time. So after that handshake, my wife won't remember again. I never shook her again. It was ten years later that the true story of that handshake was told. But there was the story didn't come to pass because there was a witness of the Holy Ghost. You don't need to know the whole story. All you need to know is the sign of the Spirit's displeasure. That is enough witness in your spirit to make you take another part. May the Lord give you understanding. I pray that God will give you the courage, the courage to be able to take another part when the Holy Spirit has brought a testimony to your heart. That is an insight into the true texture of the things that you are confronting. In Jesus' great name, we do pray. All right, let's move to the gift of word of knowledge. I can't overemphasize this. I can't overemphasize this. In doctrine, in knowing people, designing people, knowing their true state. Hallelujah. Okay, I've not said this before. I went for, to preach in a meeting. And I was, we were two ministers. Uh, and I was hurrying to be part of the first minister's session. Um, so I, I, I stressed myself that day. And luckily, I arrived the place. So I was ushered to my seat. And I was part of the meeting. And it came to pass, while this great meeting was going, I mean, it's, you know, a meeting where you have like 5,000 people on the crusade ground, that's it. That's, that's serious. All right? So I, as the meeting was going on, I was feeling that something was missing. It was one of the things I noticed was that this was supposed to be a crusade, an outdoor meeting crusade. And what we are doing here is to get people to accept Jesus. And the way the message was coming, it didn't look, it had no weight, but there was a lot of, it was full of talk. But I was wondering because uh, the person that ministered before me was a more senior minister and he's supposed to understand the import of what it means to be on a crusade ground ministering to young people. You might not have that opportunity tomorrow. So whenever you are faced with that kind of a privilege, you go there with red eyes. Red eyes, not red eyes of vengeance, but red eyes that have been made red by prayer. Well, a lot of stuff happened, a lot of stuff happened there. 
But when it was time to, for the altar call, only two people gave their life to God. Out of about 5,000, the whole field was packed full. And then uh, the minister was leaving. So I guess the organizers of the meeting are told him, uh, the second minister too is around. So, uh, how are you? Fine. Bam. Immediately this happened. I've never felt like that before. Inside, I was feeling. God have mercy. What is this? So, it, it continued, but I, I contained myself. I was, you know, I was so calm. But inside, so when we left the crusade ground, came to the hotel room. People wanted to see me. I, I begged them just to leave me for two hours. Let me, because I've never felt like that in all my life before. And uh, I will not tell you what um, the two hours produced. It produced something. Make well, the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. The gift of word of knowledge. So from that day I took, I knew that that person that ministered that day was not a messenger of God. I, I knew that. I knew that experientially. I was not responsible for the unease I felt. And just in case, all right, it was me that was doing it, I went to find out what is this. And what I heard was not good. I want to tell us something about God with respect to knowledge. Before we can understand the gift of word of knowledge, we need to understand the God of knowledge. The God of knowledge. And if you come with me to the book of Job, chapter 38, we will take a glimpse at the God of knowledge before we begin to talk about the word of knowledge. In Job chapter 38. In Job chapter 38. Are you still here? Alright, in Job chapter 38 there is something. There is something that um, Job, God did. Because uh, the cardinals that came to visit Job were philosophers, they were the wise men in their own right from their own place. And the reason why I call them cardinals is because Job happened to the, to the cardinal of the east. That was where he was. And the other guys came from their own place. And if he was the guy of the east, then probably there was one that came from the north, there was one that came from the west, there was one that came from the south, in different places. And each one came with a certain flavor of philosophy. And the reason for philosophy in those times was to give perspective to human experience. What, what is the reason for this, for instance? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? They wanted to have reason for the things that took place. And these were the wise men of the time that had the capacity and the depth to bring perspective. Until one of theirs became a victim. The others came and looked upon his condition. And for seven days they did not say anything. How I wish they didn't say anything at all. Because they were actually totally uh, ignorant of what was playing out in Job's situation. And we could see that one of Job's friends was arguing from a perspective of human experience. And what that means is, uh, if you, this man sinned, committed adultery, and this was the consequence, all right? Because of human experience, if you are a victim of that consequence, then according to human experience, it is likely you committed <laughs> adultery. So that's the argument. He came from the perspective of human experience. The other cardinal came from the perspective of human merit. And Job was arguing from a perspective of self-righteousness. And uh, after many days of argument, it was obvious that Job's argument was superior to the arguments of the other philosophers. And a young man that was in their company who 
did not have the right to have the floor because he had not earned the status of a cardinal in his own place yet. He came as a supportive agency to one of the wise men, now begged to make a statement on the floor. And you know he was the most accurate. He said, there is a spirit in man. The reason why I made that statement was because in order for you to be a cardinal, age must be on your side. So the people that were speaking were aged. And they were drawing out of the storehouse of experience. And if you are not that experience, you are not expected to have accumulated enough wisdom to give direction to the younger people. So when the ancient people failed to bring Job to order. This guy now begged to speak. You know what he said? Hallelujah. That there is a spirit in man. And what? And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So he was trying to provide a legitimacy for the comments and for his contribution. And that his legitimacy was that he has a spirit. And right about the time that the contention reached a stalemate, he was inspired of the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gave them understanding. So he began to make a presentation. And his presentation was most accurate, but Job still had an argument to present, even after those thought-provoking and spiritually infused comments that came from the young man Elihu. In Job's presentation, at some point he made it clear that if it was possible for God to organize a court session where he will be in the dock like himself so that Job can argue himself, his case out before a different umpire. It would have been a wonderful scenario. However, God decided to grant Job the opportunity of a response. Now, um, I know you, one time or the other in your life, you have asked God the question, why before? Okay? Have you asked God why before? Pastor Forces, have you asked God why before? I have asked. Why? Many times. Did he answer you? Did he answer you? You know why? He has already answered Job. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> the answer he will give all of us, he already gave Job. So there's no need for him. Oh, Sister Ruth, have you asked God? <laughs> you have asked God why before? I'm trying to tell you the answer. God answered all of us in Job. The first thing that God did when he showed up in Job chapter 38, which is my emphasis, was that Job had to come for cross-examination in order for Job's depth to be tested. You know, the Bible says, counsel in the heart of man is like deep waters. And a man of understanding draweth it out. So, the way by which you can access counsel in the heart of a man of understanding by, as a man of understanding, he should ask questions. You know, there are some people that don't talk much, but they answer much. God is like that. God doesn't speak much, but God only answers much. So it is when you become a very notorious prayer warrior that you can get God to answer. And it's on the strength of these answers that you can build the faculties of your spiritual intelligence. Because God doesn't talk much. You need to provoke him to talk. Uh, you need to, you, a man of understanding knows how to draw counsel out. Alright? So God now said, alright, let's draw counsel out of you. Since you say you want to stand with me in a courtroom and to charge me, let me test you. So God then showed up in a whirlwind and uh, in verse 2, it says, who is this that darkness counsel my words without knowledge. So, the thing about Job's presentations, because Job, God was actually part of the discussion from the beginning. And the thing about Job's presentations was that it was devoid of 
knowledge. And if you are a student of the Bible, if you still remember Hannah, when God visited with Hannah, and she gave birth to her first son that she, he, she dedicated to God according to her promise, she was doing a thanksgiving service. And she began with thanksgiving, and she now entered into exhortation. And one of the things she said when she was flowing on the frequency of exhortation was that our God is a God of knowledge, and by Him actions are weighed. Now, I know it is easy to trivialize that statement. Our God is a God of knowledge. Akombo doesn't have knowledge. Akombo, the idol in your village. And so, if you see people that serve that idol, they are retarded. In fact, when you are looking strange and very dirty, you are a companion of the spirit in the, in the shrine area. There is a way, a consultant, <laughs> a chartered consultant of such an entity. There is a way they look, which is different from. Meanwhile, in the eyes of that spirit, this is the, <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Our God happens to be a God of knowledge. That's what Anna said. And by him, actions are way. So if you are going to understand God, try to perceive his knowledge. Because in everything that he does, there is a knowledge element, a knowledge foundation in everything that our God does. And so when he came, the first thing observation he made about Job was that Job was just talking, but there was no knowledge in his talk. You see, you can be talking and you can be preaching and you believe you are communicating, but when it is weighed in the balances, of the God that is the God of knowledge. There was no knowledge in what Job was communicating. It was not founded upon knowledge. So God now invited Job to come up and to guard his loins because God wants to test Job's depth. You see, I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Let us test you through cross-examination to see if you have the stature to stand side by side me in that court that you proposed that will be the solution to your quagmire. And the first question that God presents to Job is, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? This is, there is a knowledge. He's asking for a knowledge. Alright? Notice that Job was quiet. So God is now saying, okay, if you were not there when I laid the foundations of the earth, and the things are affecting you now, I put them in place from that time. How can you claim you really have knowledge? It's the things I fasting, the protocol I fasting when I was coupling the foundations, is what is playing out in your life now. So if you were not as ancient as being present when I set up the foundations of the earth, you don't have sufficient statutory knowledge to be able to contend with me just in case I afford you the privilege of presenting myself as someone that will contend to find who has the balanced position. You are, you are a, an inconsequential element in the orchestration and administration of things. Because I set something in motion while I was fastening the foundations of the earth of which you know nothing of. So tell me, how much substance do you think is in what we are talking about? That's the first question that they ask me. Let me... <laughs> I know somebody is already saying, yeah, I know you brought us here today to tell us that we are small. I'm not saying that... You I'm not telling you that you are small. I'm saying that you are small. You are too small. <laughs> you are too small. All right, go to verse 18. You will see more things. So if you read Job chapter 38, you are going to see questions that you and I cannot answer. The reason why we cannot answer it is that this our God, he never does anything outside of knowledge. He's a God of knowledge. 18 says, Has thou perceived the breath of the earth, declare if thou knowest it all. 
the underline the word knowest because he's testing his knowledge bank if if he has knowledge. If he has knowledge. So God is telling uh, Jude, you know, you ask God why. He's saying, Do you know the have you ever seen the breath of the head? If you have not seen the breath of the head, then you don't by any means measure up to the skill of wisdom and knowledge that is at work that looks like a mystery to you. You cannot unravel it. It's beyond you. And knowing that God has set in motion a protocol that embraces a knowledge that is beyond what you can fathom, it therefore means that you should be at home with many things that you cannot explain. Are you with me? Okay. You are not with me. <laughs> hey. All right. Next verse. He say, where is the way where light dwelleth? That's the question. Are you aware that light has a dwelling place? He said, where is the way? To the place where light, what? Dwelleth. And as for darkness, where is the place thereof? There is a dwelling place for light. And there is a dwelling place for darkness. He said, do you know the way to the dwelling of light? The first question is, do I, am I, do I know that light has a dwelling? Before we now talk about the navigation system that is going to expose us to the pathway. To the place where... I'm just trying to show you the... I know some of you are PhD holders, I understand that, in the parliament and, uh, you know, uh, but um, <laughs> what you got in your PhD, all right, where this entity speaking is standing, you need to throw that certificate away. He said, do you know the way where to where light Light, dwell it. Hallelujah. All right. That's not all. Next one. He says that thou shouldest, that thou shouldest take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Next one there. He said, knowest thou it because thou was then born? He said, you know that because you were born then. It means there is a requirement of being ancient. That is a necessity if you are going to tap into the frequency of the kind of knowledge that we speak about. Were you born then? So there are several things that were put in motion even before Satan was created. Satan is not even ancient enough to know several secrets that are captured in the government and in the mystery of the will of God. And that's why at his best, at his brightest, Satan once and again is found helping God to accomplish his purpose. Because his data bank is filled with many, many gaps and his miscalculations are the things that God normally exploits again and again. To bring victory out of a trap that is initiated by the devil. Even Corona is global. Never has the world ever been shut down. Not because of a, a, um, uh, a flood like in the days of Noah. But human beings were healthy but in the house. So uh, an event of this magnitude even though not from God, could not have taken place without God's permission. And from our own perspective, as we are pleading for God's mercy, God is not perturbed. We are the only ones perturbed because our knowledge element is limited. But the one that sits in heaven, when he looks at the best that the devil can do, is normally, especially if God allows it, it is a springboard for the introduction of, of the will of God in the most brightest and most perfect way possible. Because what we are talking about here is knowledge, battles that have to do with knowledge. Now, if you are going to have to become a partner with a God that is so vast in knowledge, beyond imagining, don't you think 
once in a while he will share a fraction of that knowledge with you so that you can become a tool, an agency through which his administrations can take place. So in the gift of word of knowledge, what happens is, meanwhile, go and read Isaiah chapter, oh, no, sorry, Job chapter 38 from verse 1 to 36, then you see the scope of knowledge. Uh, you have an idea of the level of knowledge, uh, the scope of knowledge that is available to our God, and then you will now know how small we are, which is, is very good, it's helpful for us to understand how small we really are. You know, I saw one guy, he walked here, he walked here the other day, he walked like this. And he said, okay, who is the pastor here? <laughs> oh, God. And I knew that uh, he was not worth responding to. When he finished doing his, I don't know whether he was doing fashion. It's only women that go, go on fashion, this and that. <laughs> when he finished, he used his door to go out. And... Uh, no one responded to him. I, I was so happy with the members of, uh, of the household that day. They were like me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we are small. Hmm? And because of uh, the administration of that rich wealth of superseding knowledge that is at work, it is not out of place for you to be in the dark. As to what his wisdom is working out in this darkness. Hallelujah. But you see, we stay rest assured that the thoughts that God has for us are thoughts of good and not of evil. Even when we cannot explain uh, the wisdom behind that which is unfolding in our circumstances and in our situations. In order for us to be effective in partnering with God as agencies through which God will administer his grand purposes, he gives us the grace to share in a fraction of that knowledge that is exclusively his. It is that grace that is encapsulated in that gift that is called what? The gift of a word of knowledge. You see, God is a God of knowledge, but he gives you the gift of what? A word of knowledge. Just a word of knowledge. Just a word of knowledge. And in view of the above, I would like to define what um, a word of knowledge is. It is a tiny portion of God's total knowledge revealed to a believer as a strategic information to enhance a purpose either spiritual or physical. It is what a tiny portion of God's total knowledge revealed to a believer as a strategic information to enhance a purpose either spiritual or physical, as the case may be. Are you still with me? He gives us the grace to be able to share in this minute fraction of knowledge, which is obviously his exclusive reserve. Are you here? It is his exclusive Reserve. All right, let me give you an idea. Do you have your Bible? Can you do First Kings chapter eight, verse thirty-nine? Let me just show you something quickly. Um, there were so many scriptures I had to open up today, so that we could follow a systematic presentation. But every time I raise my eyes and look at the time, it's obvious that it's impossible. So I had to leave many of the scriptures out. If not, in building a case for the God of knowledge, if we have traveled as we ought to have traveled, you will find out indeed that we are small. Part of the reasons why we need the Holy Spirit's help to succeed in the enterprise of prayer is because you do not, we know not 
what we should pray as we ought. Huh? Because of this obvious limitation, we need the Spirit's help. And just in case you know what you should pray, because you don't know what you should pray. If, I, if God should say, ask anything right now, except the Spirit helps you, what you will ask will not be relevant. For instance, before Corona, some people that were infected, some people that died now, before the Corona came, if you ask them, ask, from, ask for something. They will ask for a trip to France, San Francisco. Meanwhile, they are not aware that a beast is coming. And their names were included in the extermination list. You know not what you should pray as you ought. So you need the Spirit's help. There is a fraction of knowledge that God is willing to make available to you that is going to facilitate your accuracy in spiritual dealings. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 8, the scripture that I said you should open. It said, Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. <laughs> Is it? Um, you know, the Bible says that men look on the outward, but God, what does he do? He looks upon the heart. And that's why God is always right, because he has all of the body of knowledge that will make him take the right decision. Have you ever taken a decision before? It was right in your eyes when you were taking it, and then five years later, when you had more knowledge, you say, wow, I wouldn't have taken this decision. Meanwhile, under the circumstances, do you understand what I'm talking about? Or you don't understand what I'm talking about? Now, for instance, this hall we are in now, under the circumstance when we built this hall, this was the best we could do, given the resources, financial resources, uh, and you understand what I'm talking about? Many years later now, we want to do video, and in doing video you need lights, and then we now realize that if we had known, we would have made this roof higher to accommodate the light. So those of you watching us from the platforms, and you have been wondering why our images are not as sharp as you want them to be, we did not have all knowledge. Because when experts now began to sample our property and sample um, the equipment that we have, that, that we realize that in terms of equipment we are good, but what is wrong is that our roof is not high enough to host the lights at a proper angle. So because of that we will have to make do with this quality until we finish building our embassy. And in that embassy, the roof is going to compensate for the error of this one lavishly. <laughs> you would do things differently if you had more knowledge. That's what I'm saying. But God always is always right the first time because he has all knowledge. And so, in the gift of word of knowledge, God shares with us one of the things which is his exclusive reserve, exclusive right. So, second definition explanation. The word of knowledge is, don't ever forget this if you forget everything I've been teaching, is informative. What did I say? The word of knowledge is informative. It doesn't come by natural reasoning or training. It happens or it is given when God inspires a man with a fraction of the information that is in God's exclusive reach. The nature of the gift of word of knowledge is that it is what? Informative. What is the nature of information? Information. Information. How many of you have heard you 
you listen to the news yesterday? Listen to the news yesterday. All right, you didn't. Anybody here? Listen to the news. Do you know the meaning of the acronym NEWS? N E W S. What does it mean? It means news, entertainment, weather, and sports. That's what news is about. And any time you listen to news, that thing you are listening to is in the past. Are you with me? Either in the past or in the present. So the scope of information is either past or present. It is never future. So the word of knowledge gives you information about the past or the present. So you can be ministering and you know about somebody's past. It's a word of knowledge. It should affect the way you minister to the person. Because if you have more knowledge, you will do things what? Differently. You see, the teaching anointing just came on me now. Huh? But the problem is, oh my God, I can most it, it just came now. It, it, the thing dropped now. But the problem is the time. Well, it's a good problem anyway. You know, because when we get to heaven, the first thing that will be removed, <laughs> the first limitation, the first hindrance that will be expunged will be time. I look forward to that um, frame of existence. All right, so it's informative in nature. It does not come by natural reasoning or training. There's no school you, go, you can go to and graduate being an expert in the administration of the gift of word of knowledge. So I need to show us a few functions. Why is it necessary? Why is it relevant? Why is it needful for us to have the gift of word of knowledge? Rule number one, it will bring conviction to truth. It will bring conviction to truth. If you preach a message, for instance, and after preaching that message, you now flow in the gift of word of knowledge, ah, people will believe that message. It will establish um, conviction. Okay? Uh, John chapter 1, verse 45 to 49 John chapter 1, verse 45 to 49, if the um, people behind the scene can help me out. He said, Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. And Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said unto him, Behold an Israelite. <laughs> he, he, he saluted him with a with word of knowledge. Behold an Israelite. Indeed, in whom is no guile. And that startled Nathanael. And Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? And Jesus answered, and said unto him, Before Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw you. Word of knowledge. Word of knowledge. He picked it up. He said, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Because there is something about the gifts of the Spirit, especially the revelational gifts that I need to tell us. I, I was hoping to finish uh, the three revelational gifts before I unveil that. All right? We can all have the gift of word of knowledge flowing through different channels. You can have the gift of word of knowledge and it flows through an inner voice. You can have the gift of word of knowledge and it flows through a vision. You can have the gift of word of knowledge and it comes through a dream. You can have the gift of word of knowledge. Different channels, but the same gift. Because Jesus said here, that I saw you when you were under the fig tree before Philip met you. So you could see the channel through which the gift was made manifest. And the channel was the open vision. 
was still the same gift, but it was manifesting through a channel. I saw you. I saw you. And the moment Jesus was able to bring this word of knowledge to this young man, this guy from that day henceforth became Jesus' disciple. He didn't need follow-up. His conviction to follow Jesus was already established. Are you with me? Are you, are, you, are you with me? He didn't need to follow him up anymore. Philip was convinced about Jesus just because of that supernatural manifestation. Now, if before this time, sorry, Nathaniel was convinced. You know, there was some doubt before, but when this gift manifested, that conviction was established. And it was a gift that did that. John chapter 4, verse 16 to 19 and verse 29. John chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. And Jesus said unto her, Go and call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. Gift of word of knowledge. Next verse. For thou hast had five husbands, and him whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And in that said thou truly the gift of word of knowledge. And the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Hallelujah. This is a gift of the prophet. And when you come up with a gift of word of knowledge and it's accurate, they say, ah, I perceive. <laughs> and that's why, <laughs> well, let me stop. Let me know. So you say, I'm, I'm, I've started it. it is, I'm, I'm all right. Go to verse 29 quickly. This is the woman's testimony. After Jesus encountered her with the gift of word of knowledge, she now testified in verse 29. And she said, come See a man which told me all things that I ever did. So this is a measure of the impact that was brought upon the woman on the account of the manifestation of what? Of the gift of word of knowledge. Come see a man that has told me what I ever did. Great impact. And her convictions about Jesus was already steadfast. And by the evening time, that woman brought the end, all the men, not women, she brought all the men of the city to Jesus by that, by that her testimony. Some women are very influential people that can facilitate a lot of things, but they will have to be convinced. The game changers and the movers of ministry, uh, will, there, there's something supernatural that will, that will convince them before they are set in motion. And for her, it was the word of knowledge. So like I said, number one, the word of knowledge will bring conviction of truth. Number two, it can confirm something that God has shown by some other means. It can confirm something that God has shown by some other means. It can confirm what God has shown by some other means. Hallelujah. When I was still in Canada, I woke up one day and I went to my friend's house. I went to Ben's house. And when I went to Ben's house, uh, the, the Lord said to me that um, there is something I have told Ben. Go to Ben's place and ask him, tell me that which the Lord told you over the night. So when I just came, I said, the Lord spoke to you in the night. And that's what I came to hear. Hallelujah. The Lord has spoken to him. And he told me that Meanwhile, what he heard, he was not sure of. You know, there are sometimes you can hear God, and then 
is you don't feel it's God. You feel it's your mind. But if someone external now comes and says, Tell me that thing that God has told you. You will now know, okay, that it is God. So the gift of word of knowledge can be used to confirm uh, things that you have received from God. From other means, it can be used as a confirmatory, confirmatory gift for confirmations. For confirmations. And, and you know, none of us will outgrow that symptom of being, not being sure about something that God spoke to you. None of us, in your Christian journey, you will never outgrow it. And the reason why it is like that is because we are operating in a mystical body. And one of the things about the speakings of God is that He doesn't speak only to you. That thing He spoke to you, someone else heard it. Because the body is mystic. And God needs to use the activity of the body to bring about confirmation. It's a ministry. As we go into the office of the prophet, you are going to see how that one of the principal roles of the prophet is to confirm, confirm the souls of the brethren. That which is already in your soul, which you have picked from the spirit, and you know it in your soul, but yet you are not so sure if it is God. Hmm. It is the prophet's duty. It's one of his duties to confirm them. To confirm the things. To confirm the things. Now, I have, I have a prayer group in my house. And there are times I wake up, but they don't know. I'm saying it now. Those guys, in, those people in my house now, there is nothing that passes that, that we don't know. <laughs> it's, 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 that place is alive. You need to be visiting that place once in a while. Something is happening there. There's, there's a living God in that place. It's alive. Sometimes I have some dealings, and then I come out, I say, yes, you know, it's the body of Christ. And then some other people will give you insight into that dealing you are having, much more than the one you received. Because it's a, it's a mystical body. And so, when God told you that you are called to be an intercessor, He told somebody else to. Because there is nothing that is, God speaks that is a secret in the body. Because it's a living body. So there is no exclusive revelation that you have. In fact, if what you are picking is different from what every other person is picking, you are wrong. Because you can actually confirm what is locking in your heart when there is a confirmation of it. And that was why I was saying that when somebody came here and began to teach strange things, we now brought him into the office. I said, can you unveil to us this? And then there was no utterance, no scripture. He said, the Holy Ghost told him. If it's the Holy Ghost, we would have heard. One of us. We are not by leading. One of us. Not, I'm not saying me, I will hear, but maybe Evangelist Shala will hear. Maybe Chief Donatus. Maybe Reverend Alphonse, we cannot all be blind. Even if the devil is attacking Sister Doshima, he won't attack all of us at the same time. Some of us will still be alive in the spirit to pick the things in God. That's why we call the way, our, our engagement in the spirit, we call it watches. You see, a centurion those days, a centurion has a sentry post. Right? Those castles that they're built with, like this, that place that comes down like this is a post. And that is a place for one soldier. It's a sentry post. Although, what they call sentry post in the military now, that is what it means. That is the original sentry post. And you will have 100 of those things in a building. So there are 100 soldiers that will keep one watch. Do you understand that? So these guys are seeing every side of the building. So when you are making an approach, they will spot you. And when they finish their watch of one hour, they will go to sleep. That was what Jesus meant when he said, could you not watch for one hour? Because the minimum watch time for a, 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 for, for a, cent, for, what the, for a centurion's team, which is one sentry post per one man for 100 sentry posts. The minimum watch time is one hour. And then a new centurion comes in duty and there are hundred soldiers under that centurion. The centurion can be sleeping. 
and then all the soldiers are watching at the central post. Do you understand? So if you are down, I can become your eyes. You can't see again. God will bring all the visions that are supposed to come to you. You are depressed. All the visions are supposed to receive me, I can receive. We cannot all be down because our times of watching are different. Yeah, our times of watching are different. So when you are down, we can even use people's eyes. And you can know what God is saying because it is a mystical body. When you find somebody trying to say he has an exclusive, one guy from Ghana said, this is my calling. I'm the only one that has it. I, I knew he was possessed. So I asked him, we need to arrange deliverance. Go and meet. I, we ha- I had to tell my wife to refer him to, for, for deliverance. That Marianne has to see this guy. This guy is, darkness has visited him. <laughs> you must know, sharpen your ears to design what is working in the lives of men. When you hear that, I'm the only one, just know like Elijah, he's wrong. What made him believe that is not God. And he needs to go for his car. Are you with me? All right. It can confirm something that God has shown by some other means. Three, it is the basic equipment for spiritual warfare and intercession. You know, the Bible says that God will train our hands to fight. God will train our fingers to walk. That training God said he he would do with our hands is word of knowledge. Because when you begin to fight um, spiritual battles, it's a terrain that you are ignorant of. You don't know the kind of things you are battling with other than what God tells you. So if you want to flow in the gift of word of knowledge very well, be someone that likes spiritual battles. Anytime you are doing deliverance and you want to cast demons out of somebody the holy spirit is active to give you word of knowledge strategic information that will enhance your victory in that line of ministry if you are face to face with the devil you can be sure of one thing strategic knowledge will begin to come that's how you fight because it's god's responsibility to train your hands to fight and to teach your fingers to war and he does that by word of knowledge. If you are doing intercession, you don't know how to pray as you ought. That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 26. But the Spirit himself, the Spirit, the Spirit, the Spirit. There is a helps ministry of the Spirit that begins to find expression, finds manifestation. When you are around something that you are not, we are obviously insufficient to engage the sufficiency of God. One of the ways it manifests is through strategic knowledge. We know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercessions for the saints with groanings that cannot be uttered. We know not. So it supplies the knowledge element so that you can know what you're fighting. You can know how to fight. You can know what to do. He gives you strategic insight so that that mystery about that enemy is is broken. And you can see the legs of clay. That is so fortified upstairs but is weak underneath. And you will know that you will direct all of your efforts to the feet of clay. Every time Satan fell, it was his leg that was his weakness. And God will direct your shot at the weakness of the enemy. And if word of knowledge is available, the catapult of David might become a veritable weapon in undoing the boasting of the giant of the land of Philistines. It is, it activates faith to receive, especially in a healing related situation. It activates faith to receive, especially in a healing-related situation. So, the gift of word of knowledge is an instrument 
is an uh, accessory that is operational in the ministry of healing. Because as you are mentioning the case, as God is telling you, there's somebody with heart born, and you mention it, a healing anointing begins to work on you. In a healing related situation, it is an agency by which people can receive. Hallelujah. I used to, Benny Hinn was my hero indeed. From the age of 18, 17, when I began to watch his videos, my dad had uh, these videos, those days of VHS, those days, you know those days. And there is this miracle walking power of God, part one and two. Those days I fast and then I put on that tape. And the glory of God on that tape was so powerful. That was the tape that I was listening to. And it was as if at some point, I was the only one in the sitting room. Benny Hinnan spoke to me. And I, 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 I didn't feel as if it was the TV. I felt he came out of the TV to tell me. He said, do you want the power? I said, I, I want the power. Oh my God, I'm here because of the power of <laughs> Jesus. And he said, stretch your hand and touch the screen. And I, I didn't know I was, oh my God. Faith can bridge the gap. <laughs> and that was where... That thing you are seeing on my life today, it came fr- through that screen. It was many years later that I discovered that I received an impartation from that place because I felt something like a cement bag here. That's the same thing I feel before I minister to the sick. If I don't feel that cement bag here, forget about it, I'll keep teaching. It, the thing is not in operation. That thing is not in operation. Yes. You need to know the chemistry of spiritual things. Until I sensed that cement bag. That was what I sensed when Benny Hinn prayed for me. And I didn't know that that was the impartation of the healing anointing. It took five years. I was in the meeting. And one minister was ministering. And then I sent the cement bag. And instantly the minister said, Oh, the healing anointing is here. Ah. Because for five years I fed the cement bag and nobody got healed. Because I didn't know what it was. And the moment it was revealed what it was, it became active. When I sensed the cement bag, I know that the healing anointing is in place. And in addition to the presence of the healing anointing, the gift of word of knowledge. Just like it operates in Benin. And we know nothing God is Dealing, want to deal with, and when I mention it, the healing anointing begins to act on the person. This is how many years now? From when I was five, 18 plus 5, huh? 23. It's 23 years old that I began to operate in the healing anointing. 23 to 43, that's how many years? That's 20 years. So I have 20 years of experience. And I can tell you with 20 years of experience, that the healing, the power gives flow on the wings of the re- revelation gifts. If you are not, if you are not fluent in the revelation gifts, there's going to be a hindrance in the administration of the power gifts. So the place to start, if you want an adventure in the supernatural, is the revelation. That's why we are starting from here. I think maybe sometime today is what what day of the week? Tuesday. Because I need to tell us how to walk in the re- revelation gifts. There is a pathway. My 20 years of experience has given me access to the back end of the operation. The back end of the software. And there are several things you can do that the healing river will flow. So that when you wake up from sleep and there's a sick person, there's, there's something you do. There's something you do. And this one I teach based on experience and understanding. Can we pray today? The gift of word of knowledge is so powerful. If it's the gift that makes people respect you the most, because it has instant confirmations. If what you are saying is true, it can be verified. Yes. It, it, so you can just walk into a place like that and say, "Hey, and I saw." <laughs> 
you walk there, you will drive out from there. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there are laws that we are going to find out. We don't sell gifts. It's not for sale. Freely have you received. And freely give. We don't sell it. There was a certain man I learned from. I learned these dimensions. The revelational dimensions. I learned under his feet. And the reason why I ran away from him was because he started selling gifts. He, he can be preaching like this and... I have seen your deliverance, but you have to see me. He wants to prophesy, he will hold it. I am in Okosia. Before I talk, drop. So when he started selling and hawking prophecy, hawking word of knowledge, hawking deliverance, on the spot market, hawking it, the price is variable, it can increase. You know that chart on Wall Street, on stocks. Began to hawk it, so I had to run away. I had to run away. And I, and I, I ran away. He was not happy, but I wanted to... My soul was precious. I had to be preserved. Oh! Oh! Jesus is alive. Yes. We didn't have... We didn't have... We, oh my God. There were so many opportunities for us to have delayed. But Jesus is alive. We will not sell gifts. We will not sell power. We will not sell. No, we will not sell. We will not sell. Because freely have we received. So freely give. You don't owe us anything because you got healed online. While we prayed, you don't owe us. It's give glory to Jesus. He's the one that sent us to you. He's the real one behind the scene that is running the show. And it is him. That deserves all the glory. God has too many ways to make you great. You don't need to sell gifts. That gift on your life is a proof that you are great. And all the accessories of greatness, the same way it came freely to you, it will yet come freely. As you give freely to your generation. God is, is more, is too vast. Beyond your small mind that read mathematics. It's too vast. The gift of word of knowledge doesn't have limitations. Just like when we go to the practicals, because I will show you that there is something called a trigger. Because I need to show you how to work the gifts. But I need to uh, finish the last one tomorrow before we do a practical. There's a trigger. You must find your trigger. Your trigger can be prayer. Maybe when you finish to preach, God now says, make sure you lead prayer. As you leave the prayer, then the atmosphere will change. When the atmosphere changes, what happens is that portals are created and angelic beings come, come into the place. When angelic beings come into the place, they actually transport the presence that they stood in before God into that arena physically. They transport it. They travel with it. They are, they are messengers of the weight of His presence that they stand in. So when they come like that, things that happen around God's presence will begin to happen that place. The anointing will take it. And then you will gain an ascendancy and access. So you find your trigger. My trigger is sound. It's not just any sound. It's, um, it's strings. It's strings. Ooh. Ooh.
I need to show you the channels because as you are as you are using your opener, you need to know the channels and know where to expect the sign because it can come as a vision. It can come as a knowing. It can come as a voice. It can come as a sign. You can just begin to feel pain here. Physical pain. It means God wants to minister to someone that has that condition. How many of you have experienced bodily? That's a sign. I, I saw someone in the spirit. Please, if this is your case, what I want to mention, if it's your case, communicate to us so that I can take action on your behalf. Woo! This person is I was seeing I was seeing that person. The person can you can lift one of your hands very well but you cannot lift your other hand very well. Communicate with me quickly. If it is you. Ah, and when he shows you like that, it's because he wants you to take action. You have a problem lifting one of your hands like the other one. Give me a signal quickly. If you are the one. Zali 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 Mustaki Kutwana from UK. Couldn't he can't lift the left hand. Right. Now Mustaki, just wait for me, I will reach out to you. I see a lady this time. Oh is it I don't want to do this because if I this my trigger. If we switch it on <laughs> la 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 Okay, two two people. If you can do what I'm doing, you switch, use your trigger and you can go into the prophetic. You are a prophet. If you can do this. If we continue now it, it will go far. Find your trigger. Find it. Find find your trigger. Oh Ha 
Listen to me, there is a lady I see, and this lady, I saw you kneeling down to pray two days ago. And while you knelt down to pray, your whole body was vibrating. Your whole body was vibrating. Please help me with the information on the dialogue uh, boxes and give me a feedback. That lady, I want to tell you what happened to you because I saw in the spirit. Hmm. La 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 le 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 la la le 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 la 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 two days ago mama me wo 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 Yes, what's, what's her name? Afia Party. Where is she from? She has not indicated. Afia Party. Af- Afia Party. What was her experience? Wow, that's me. Say ni e ni ambala borobo e sani na dala e ababo. Say ni e alaba barabo. Say say la mama. have 30 minutes to preach, preach for 15 minutes and pray. God honors your prayer. Ooh. What? Another one outside with the same experience two days ago. Oh, two days ago. Two days ago. Another lady from Botswana. The oh, 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 oh. power of God. <laughs> There is somebody that stammers. This person stammers, all right? And this person asks God to, in prayer, this person asks God to heal him or her. I don't know. If it's male or female, ask God to heal him or her of stammering not too long ago. I just saw the prayer scene. If the person is there, you can you ask God to heal you. Oh, what is it? <laughs> All right. Okay, we have somebody here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring your servant before you. You know what you did to me to heal my tongue? Do double to him. And cause him to be mighty in word and deed. That which you did to Moses. That removed the limitation. And made him mighty in words. Mighty indeed. Do in the life of your servant. And let there be a special enablement that backs up his utterance from this day. As he preaches the gospel. In Jesus name. Huh? Five other persons. On which case? 
the stammering case. Okay. They prayed a few days ago. Now, you know I can't manipulate the people online. I can't manipulate them. Male and female. Listen to me, those of you. Um, the people that felt a shaking while you were praying two days ago, I beheld in the spirit and I saw an angel of the Lord radiant like light. And the Lord has changed your angel. That angel will partner with you in the place of intercession. You will have more results when you pray right now. You have more results when you pray. And for these ones with stammering, um, oh my God, I'm seeing an anointing. An anointing that is going to come upon your life. And when God wants you to speak for him, there will be so much utterance beyond, beyond your ability to think. God will give you words that will communicate his heart. Spirit energized communication that relates the heart of God to the heart of man. And then for the one that could not raise his hand, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I destroy the spirit of paralysis. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I destroy the spirit of paralysis in the name of Jesus. Okay, anywhere you are, lift your hand up. No, no, those people. Not, <laughs> sorry. Those, those, those people. You can lift your hand now. It will go up now. Ooh. Now watch out for the people whose hands have gone up. It will go up now. Raise it up now in the name of Jesus. I have destroyed the hold of paralysis. I have destroyed the hold of pain. I command that pain to give way. I command paralysis to give way in the name of Jesus. Ah. 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 Ah.